So now we are on the last video of a cellular respiration and the topic which we are discussing is respiratory quotient or RQ. It is also known as respiratory ratio. It is defined as the ratio of the volume of carbon dioxide volume of carbon dioxide released to the volume of oxygen absorbed during respiration. So if we know these numbers, we will be able to calculate RQ. And RQ is calculated for a particular substrate. That means if we want to know what is the RQ of carbohydrate, we need to write a reaction in which carbohydrate is being broken down. The most common reaction that we talk of is glucose, that is C6H12O6, when undergoes aerobic breakdown, we take six molecules of oxygen here. And after this aerobic breakdown, there are six carbon dioxide molecules produced, six water molecules and energy is given out. Right now our main focus is on oxygen and carbon dioxide but that is going to give us the RQ of this substrate. If we put the values here it is 6 CO2 and 6 O2 that means it is going to come to 1. So in case of carbohydrates The respiratory quotient is always going to be 1. Now it is not necessary that every time the question asked will say what is the RQ of carbohydrate. They can give us a substance, a food item which is rich in carbohydrate. Say for example if they say that you are eating potatoes or you, you are eating rice then what is the RQ of that substrate? We know potato has only starch, rice has only starch, starch is a carbohydrate so RQ is one. So it can be directly giving the name of the substrate or it could be because of the food item also. Now let us take few more substrates and I'm going to give you the balanced reaction so that we save time on balancing. Let us say we are taking proteins or fats which we are digesting here. So it is tripalmitin which is a fatty acid or fat which we are taking C51H98 O6, two molecule of this fat tripalmitin when oxidized there are 145 oxygen molecules which are required and 102, 102 carbon dioxide molecules are released, 98 water molecules and energy. If you want, you can balance it also on your own, but this is a balanced one so that we save little time on it. So, 102 carbon dioxide over 145 oxygen molecules. After we calculate this, the ratio is going to be less than 1. It would come closer to 0.7. That means, in case of fat or protein, as our substract, RQ is going to be always less than 1. So 0.7 is not really important. It is important that the RQ will be less than 1. So in case of carbohydrate, it's going to be 1. In case of fats or proteins, it is going to be less than 1. Let us take a couple of more reactions. respiratory substrate is an organic acid and we are taking oxalic acid. Two molecules. This is our third thing and we are talking of organic acids as our substrate. It undergoes oxidation in presence of oxygen molecule, one oxygen molecule 
to give us four carbon dioxide, two water molecules and energy. If we put these values, it is going to be four CO2 over only one O2. So this number is definitely going to be more than one. Here we get four. RQ in case of organic acids is going to be more than one. It is normally very high. We can take one more example, say malic acid. That is C4H6O5. In presence of three molecules of oxygen, gives us four carbon dioxide, three water molecules and energy. Again, let us put these values, four CO2 and three O2. It is again going to be more than one. In this case, it's going to be 1.3. So again, as I said, the numbers are not important exactly. The thing which is important is whether it is one, less than one, or more than one. So carbohydrate is going to be one, protein fats it's going to be less than one. In case of organic acids it is going to be more than one. Now we will take two more reactions. The substrate remains the same we are changing the type of breakdown. So in anaerobic respiration, what happened in case of anaerobic respiration? Glucose is broken down in absence of oxygen. And we remember the reaction of formation of ethyl alcohol. We know there are two molecules of carbon dioxide which are given out and two ethyl alcohol is, molecules are formed and there is energy which is given out. Now when you put these values, it is two carbon dioxides and how many oxygens are here? There is no oxygen here. Any number divided by zero will give you infinite. So here RQ is going to be infinite. The fifth reaction which we are talking about is in some special type of plants like succulent plants. The reaction that takes place is C6H12O6 that is our glucose molecule is broken down in presence of oxygen. Here three oxygens are required, two of these molecules and it gives us three molecules of malic acid and three molecules of water plus energy. Now let us see the reaction and put the values. How many carbon dioxides are here in this reaction? There is no carbon dioxide molecule given. So there is a zero here and three O2. It is the answer here. The value which we will get is zero divided by anything. Our answer is going to be zero. So there are five things which we have to remember. Carbohydrate, RQ is one. Fats and proteins, RQ is less than one. Organic acids, RQ is more than one. In case of anaerobic respiration, it is infinite. In case of succulent plants, we can write this in succulent plants, the RQ is zero. So five numbers are the ones which we have to remember. Now if a question is asked, what is the RQ of a balanced diet? In balanced diet, we have three things, three main things, proteins, fats and carbohydrates. Proteins and fats have less than one, carbohydrate is one. So if we take a sum of all these things, it is definitely going to be less than one. So in case of balanced diet, normally the I, RQ comes to 0.85 to be very precise, but it can have a range because our balanced diet changes from age to age. So we are talking about the general uh, balanced diet its RQ is going to be 0.85, less than 1, because we have 
two things which are giving RQ less than one, that is fat and protein, and one giving RQ, RQ one. So it comes out to be somewhere around 8.85. This is of balanced diet. So this is about respiratory quotient. And we have discussed all the steps of uh, cellular respiration. I hope you have understood each and every step. If you have missed out on something, you can go back to the previous videos and revise those.